Hi guys, this is Ukrainian Toronto Television Podcast. My name is Melania, my co-host Mark here, and today we have a very topical and very important guest for us. Uh, his name is uh, Michal Potocki, and he is a journalist of a Polish newspaper called uh, Jenny Gazeta Prawna. Hi, Michal. Hello there, hi. Um, and this is a very good timing for this podcast because, well, uh, we have uh, a very good uh, and uh, very supporting relations with our neighboring country that is Poland. Poland has been very um, kind of vocal about their support of Ukraine. And there have been, all, obviously, as in any cases, some misunderstanding and small conflicts. And recently... Um, there, um, a, a, a famous uh, Polish author has uh, come up with a book. Um, the name is, of the book is uh, Polska na Wojnie, which means Poland at War. Um, it, it is, it is kind of, um, a, uh, if you will, like a diary, a political diary. Uh, the author has spoken with various, uh, politicians in Poland and has made this like political diary of what uh, was ho- happening on the Polish side uh, do- when the war in Ukraine was starting and it is ongoing. And so uh, given the release of this book and given the current uh, situation, geopolitical kind of sometimes tension, sometimes supports from both Polish and Ukrainian side, uh, we invited Michał to kind of give us his insight on both the political situation, uh, and also the book. Um, so as to, you know, kind of explain on this channel, we like to explain to our partners and our friends uh, in the West, especially in America, a uh, kind of the uh, history and stories that have to do with the, you know, this part of Europe, this part of the world. So, uh, yeah, uh, to begin with, um, you as a Pole, as a journalist, uh, we as Ukrainians, how would you, how would you describe the current uh, relationships of Poland and Ukraine? Well, they are not as bad as some of us think about them. Uh, um, and the same we could say about these relations like uh, a year ago. They were not as good as we thought uh, they were. Um, in fact, uh, Poland and Ukraine have some um, very specific and large group of large part of interest in common. Uh, first of all, first of all, uh, defense. First of all, the war itself. And Poland, uh, Poland stays and will stay uh side by side with ukraine because uh, not only because of our of our of our like moral support but also it is it is in our very well uh, underst- uh, understandable national interest uh, but of course uh, as with every neighbor we have some conflict situations we have some some interests that are not you know uh, along uh, between poland and ukraine and uh, uh, sometimes it looks like we could uh, we could do better in terms of understanding each other and in terms of being able to talk to each other in these situations when something happens when something bad happens and uh, this is i i believe this is this is this is uh, the biggest problem with the grain issue uh, a few weeks ago uh, it looks like it could be a problem with the border crossing right now. It is blocked by some, some guys from the transportation, um, the transportation business in Poland. And it, it, it didn't look like as bad as, as with grain, but it could. Uh, so, so we should really learn to, to talk to each other in a normal way, like a normal neighbors. We are not Russians. Uh, we are, we are normal Euro- European countries and, uh, and this is this is how we should deal with 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 problems uh, in in a normal and and calm, uh, maybe maybe m- most of all calm uh, way. But the relations itself are not as bad as uh, as sometimes we can we can read in some some you know uh, articles or, or publicist stuff. Is it like we, now we um, every day we are getting more um, information and more pictures of the blockade on the border? Uh, two Ukrainian drivers died um, close to the border already, probably related to this blockade because like a lot of trucks are staying there for weeks now, uh, and it feels like part of some bigger quarrel of some bigger conflict uh, between Ukraine and Poland, um, especially considering that. The blockade influences the uh, what's going on on the front lines uh, and endangers Ukrainian lives on the front lines. Um, it, like, is there something? Is there a bigger thing which we don't know yet or don't understand, or is it just like a coincidence and some like far right parties trying to gain some political advantage of the situation? 
Well, I believe I believe today everything's clear. I mean, there are some there are some business reasons uh, because some of the transportation companies, especially based in the eastern part of Poland, uh, next to the border with Ukraine, um, have some really serious problems because of because of what's going on. But there is also a political factor, and this political factor is a uh, very bad uh, information for both of our countries because. Uh, as you have mentioned, some far right politicians uh, from the uh, from the party called Confederacja Confederation. Uh, some of uh, politicians from this party are clearly pro Russian. I mean, some of them visited occupied Crimea uh, via Russia, so not not officially, not legally. Um, and some of them said some pretty crazy stuff about what's going on in in Ukraine right now. And one of the leaders of this protest is a politician, is a local politician of of, uh, of this party. So there is clearly also a political factor. I believe that uh, Polish government should deal with it because border crossing is not it's not a just a you know ordinary ordinary place. It is a strate strategically important place, especially especially when the war is going on, and especially when Polish national interest is. Uh, for Ukraine to win this war, right? So, uh, but uh, the problem is, and I think one of the main problems is that we are in the pause right now in Poland between between one government and another. Uh, the uh, previous government, which is still formally a government, is a lame duck. So they are thinking only about, uh, they are not thinking about about any serious work to do because they are trying to, you know, to find a majority in the new parliament after the parliamentary elections, which, which looks impossible. Based on you know mathematics, but I think uh, they look like they didn't understand that mathematic at all right now. Uh, th there is no new government still. We are waiting. There is a coalition, but there should be you know all the, all of these procedures in parliament. Uh, so probably there will be no new government uh, until middle of December. Uh, so 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 it is kind of anarchic situation right now. In fact, and this is also. And this is also a problem because it, 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 for example, uh, it makes the negotiations between the Ukrainian and Polish government right now really hard because, okay, the, uh, the formal government, uh, the former government could promise you something, but that doesn't mean that the next government would, would, you know, to, to take it seriously. Um, and there is, there is also a feeling in Warsaw that there is no sense, there is no, you know, no reason to, 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 to work because we are like right now, you know, packing our, our stuff and, and, and go out for our uh, ministries. Um, so, uh, this is also, so as I said, there are some, uh, business reasons, there are some political reasons, and there is this very fatal coincidence that right now it is no one talk, no one to talk to uh, in Poland. So coming back to that, and the reason, uh, one of the, the second reason we invited you today is because of the book, which is, you now can even call it uh, infamous in Ukraine, even though it, as I said, hasn't been translated. Uh, Mr. Zbigniew Parafianowicz, a famous uh, po Polish journalist, has written a book about Polish part uh, in this war. Um, and there has been some discussions. You have closely worked with him before. And the two kind of main issues that, uh, you know, Ukraine public, uh, I mean, many issues, you know, as many people, as many opinions. But one of the main issues in our media kind of sphere was that uh, a lot of this uh, in this book is based on these Anonymous sources, private conversations, private opinions of different politicians. For instance, there was this, uh, I mean, at this point, almost like a joking uh, anecdote that, uh, you know, there was this Polish parliamentarian who received a um, kind of a uh, medal from President Zelensky, but this, Zelensky didn't give it to him and he got kind of got offended. And uh, that's why he had to come to Ukraine and then was awarded this medal. So it's a whole bunch of, it's a mix of very interesting I guess facts, but it's a lot of opinions also in this book. So, is this kind of book safe? Um, it's obviously relevant, but like, what what is your professional opinion? What was the goal that was being achieved here? Is it going to maybe put uh, our countries more together, or is it going to you know put maybe some uh, again a, a little bit more of divide in in the relations? What do you think? Well, uh, first of all, let me underline because it is very important for our viewers to to understand that uh, that uh, uh, Zbigniew Parafianovic is a friend of mine, and we have worked together for fifteen years. Uh, it is important from ethical point of view to underline this. Uh, sa by saying that this, well, uh, this is yes, as you have mentioned, this th these are 
there are only private opinions and there are only uh, anonymous uh, uh, sources in this book. This is all based on anonymous sources. But uh, as, uh, as, as, as Zbigniew said uh, also during uh, many interviews in Poland after this book has been released, um, uh, his goal was to, uh, to show the real state of mind of our politicians towards the war, towards uh, what happened between Poland and Ukraine, between Poland and our Western allies. Uh, and uh, this goal could be achieved only by let the politicians speak, um, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the truth or, or what they think it's true is truth. Uh, if you, if you ask me about, about, uh, and you know, the, the, the goal of the journalist is to, is to show the truth or, uh, or, or to show the real state of mind of the people we are, we are writing about. So uh, there, there are no strategic goals, you know, p political strategic goals. Um, when you take uh, any book, for example, from the United States uh, um, uh, about describing, for example, the White House during Donald Trump presidency, there were plenty of books, right? Better and worse, but there are. Uh, for example, if you take Fire and Fury, there are also mainly anonymous sources because it is impossible to let politicians say tr tell truth if, the, if, if they are not anonymous, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, it is, of course, it is, it is risky for a journalist because it is all based on uh, their reliability, right? Um, and if you always, uh, on, on our job, if you write something which is untrue, you are finished, right? Because, 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 you know, everything you would write, uh, you would write after this, uh, there will be some people who would claim, okay, but remember this guy's uh, last article? It was all based on lies. Uh, no one accused uh, Zbigniew Parafianowicz on lying from the Polish politicians, right? Even though, uh, even though some facts, because, you know, this is, this is not a book which is like, uh, um, hate against against our politicians, but th it, he is showing this uh, political uh, history of of uh, our attitude to, to towards war, both from good sides and bad sides. There are some things I can be proud of that my government did, but uh, there are some things that make me embarrassed uh, or, or ashamed. Maybe ashamed is too far because I'm not the part of the government, but maybe embarrassed. Um, and uh, th this is why I guess it's kind of interesting. And this is why it is, it should be translated because right now uh, I believe that I also follow some Twitter, you know, discussions about this book. There are some good and bad opinions. And I believe some of these opinions uh, are based on, uh, on, on kind of, um, some of them are, are coming from people who didn't, uh, didn't read it clearly because, uh, in fact, there is no author in this book. There are only quotes of the politicians from the, um, uh, from the, you know, surroundings of president, surroundings of our prime minister. Uh, I know, I know Zbigniew Parafinovich, uh, very well. And I may say that he has very good sources uh, from both of these, uh, uh, let's say offices, right? So, um, uh, I have been, uh, I have been present during very small part of this, of this, of this interviews he made, uh, um, and so I may say that from this part, I can say that all of it, all of it has been said by the politicians that, uh, that, that he met. I may also say that uh, I am responsible in, a, in our newspaper for, uh, Polish, Ukraine, Poland, Ukrainian, uh, uh, political relations too, and for Ukraine internal polit politics. And I may say that, uh, I have also been focused on some of the topics, uh, uh, described in this book. For example, about the story of uh, this huge Polish Ukrainian treaty that has been promised by our presidents, uh, in May 2022. Um, uh, that we all forgot about it right now. Uh, and yeah, uh, this I, is also a part of this book. I may say that uh, this is this is, uh, and I, I've been very into it. Like a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I have been published. I, I have published a huge story about it. And I may say everything is uh, is uh, everything in this book is according to my knowledge, to my very very best knowledge. Some of it were also based on anonymous sources because this is what we do. This is what the political journalists do. This is our reliability. I cannot lie in my article because we are in a in a world of social media and uh, any lie would be pointed by 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 some guy who knows it who knows the truth 
so uh, yeah, um, finishing this finishing this part, uh, I would say that uh, I hope this book would be translated into Ukrainian because the discussion about this book would be would be more would be, would be would be more uh, would be fairer would be just fair. Yeah. What was like the the book is um, pretty shocking from a lot of standpoints, especially the parts about um, po- um, the negotiations between in, in talks between Polish uh, politicians and Americans uh, and Europeans. But what was from the book? Uh, what was the most shocking, um, probably re- revelation for you? That's a good question. Uh, I have to I have to remind because I have. Uh, uh, um, I, I, I read the book, of course. I, I, I have it. I have it right here. But uh, but but Zbigniew Prafinovic to- told me a lot of it during his work. Uh, so um, I would say I would say there is there are no. I mean everything. Uh, there are some. Uh, there are some. There are some like uh, the, the, the tiny points that are that are some some that could be could be could be claimed as shocking, but. If you are into Polish-Ukrainian relations, you have already had an impression of it, at least, uh, right? So, uh, for example, when when he when he is describing Polish-Ukrainian relations that were so good in the beginning of the Russian full-scale invasion in 2022, and suddenly something happened that we started to discuss uh, the grain issue, or there started to be some conflicts. Um, and uh, he is describing, for example, the role of Przewodów incident. Uh, it was the incident of the missile that has exploded, that exploded on the Polish territory, Polish ground, um, killing two of our citizens. And um, I, I think it could be interesting because I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I knew, I understood that this, uh, this was an important, uh, in, an important uh, moment, but I didn't realize that it was so important. But basically, what he is describing is that after Przewodów incident, this uh, trust between Presidents Duda and Zelensky dropped, because as mm. uh, people from the Duda surrounding uh, are describing, Zelensky tried too hard to convince Polish side that this was Russian missile which exploded, while Polish side had already proven for uh, during this internal investigation that this was Ukrainian anti-missile. Never, uh, nevertheless, uh, the Polish side, and this was also publicly, publicly, uh, publicly um, uh, spoken by our politicians right after the incident. We have no. Uh, reason to accuse Ukraine of anything because without the war there would be no incident, never mind to what kind of racket exploded on Polish ground. So we all put the blame on Russia because of it, and we just uh, we just didn't want to hear that it was the, 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 it was the Russian missile. And uh, and 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 after this incident, uh, and right now I it it, it it's you know this this puzzles like um, uh, our very well understandable after this book that this was Przewodów who started this uh this this process of losing uh mutual trust between all of between uh, our presidents and uh, it has continued because of the grain crisis uh it is also described in this book i believe pretty well and i may say it because i have also been focused on this grain problem uh, i visited ukraine also to to speak to ukrainian uh politicians and 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 experts about this and i believe also this this was the problem because because both sides both in warsaw and kiev believed uh, that the other side uh, doesn't tell all of the truth and there are some you know some games some some underst- some some uh, how to understand games which shouldn't happen in uh, the relations of countries so close because of the wars and so so uh, that, that has been so close especially after after the 24th of of, uh, of february i believe uh, it's the, what is shocking to me because it is mainly a book about poland about polish politicians about polish policy i wouldn't i wouldn't even say that ukraine is the main topic of this book this is the context mm. this is the reason and this is the story on the background. But this is the book about Poland, about Polish reactions, about Polish politicians, about about the uh, uh, sometimes the state, the Polish state being unable to do what it has promised because of some procedures and because of some you know internal conflicts inside of the president's office. For example, this is uh, this is also an, a very interesting story. And to me, sad. I have said that there are some embarrassing. Uh, 
uh, embarrassing uh, moments. And I believe the biggest one is that uh, we haven't been able, our politicians uh, uh, hadn't been able to stop some internal games and internal conflicts, you know, internal uh, like fights for influence around Duda uh, or around Morawiecki or around president and prime minister. And this is something the mo this is something embarrassing because I wanted to believe that in the, the moment of truth, in the moment of challenge, in the moment of threat also to our security, because this war isn't, a, this is not only about Ukraine. This is, uh, this is about, you know, Western uh, Russian tensions, the Western Russian Cold War. Uh, that in this very particular moment, our politicians would forget about internal fights for influence. Uh, they seemed to forget for a few months, but after these few months, they uh, they they like you know uh, um, uh, this 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 uh, this these fights uh, begin be, began again. I think I think also this is something we can say about uh, Ukrainian internal politics. So this is maybe yeah. something maybe something yeah, we have in common. This Ukraine. is not a Polish thing. <laughs> yeah, this is this not is... just a Polish thing. Uh, this happens. I mean, it's not about Poland or Ukraine or everywhere. It's just the longer it takes to solve a crisis, the more people, especially politicians, are prone to getting used to it and going back to their old things. When you're not, when you're, when you don't feel like your existence is being threatened, you can go back to doing what you did before, which is completely not, it's not good, but it's natural. You know what? Uh, there is a joke in this book, uh, 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 told by some of the politicians that we in Warsaw understood that Ukraine won the war of its existence because now, now we are fighting the war about your borders, right? But you have won the war of your existence when the corruption back on the border. And this is, um, th th this, this is not political correct at all, but uh, our previous government weren't political correct. I agree. No, they weren't. Uh, but but yes. maybe, but maybe this is something, you know, when you are, when you are close, when you are a friend, you can joke with them on a less political correct way that you can, that, for example, I can do with you right now. Yeah. Maybe when you, when yeah. we will get to know each other, like in a year, uh, we can, we can make some, some jokes that are more, let's say courageous but what uh, what i wanted to say what i always say uh, also in poland but also to the ukrainian journalists that sometimes poles and ukraine uh, to my belief poles and ukrainians are closer and more similar that we wanted to uh, to acknowledge sometimes and i believe these quarrels between our these internal quarrels between our politicians but also the way we deal with conflicts between each other Maybe this is something Central European. You know, this is what 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 define us as Central Europeans, because we had we had very similar cro uh, conflicts with the Lithuanians, with the Czechs, and uh, no one understood why it is why it has escalated so much. There is no fundament for such an escalation, and I believe this is also something between Poland and Ukraine in the grain crisis, in this border crisis. We don't need to escalate. We have some more serious matter to deal with. But nevertheless, we, we, we continue yeah. to do it. I was going to make a joke, you know, like when people really love each other, their quarrels become like really horrible. <laughs> like the more, the, the closer people are, the more they argue. I guess maybe that's it. <laughs> maybe this is something, yeah. Maybe this is something. <laughs> ah, well, I guess I, I was going to say that, you know, maybe our podcast is going to shed some hope in the especially Twitter community, because when I logged in this morning, it was horrible there. So, guys, again, maybe our nice conversation about these difficult, albeit necessary topics will kind of let both parts, um, you know, kind of settle a little bit and think about it clearly. Uh, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, the, uh, the things, the, the Polish strike on border and soon and then Ukrainian can you know drive the necessary things to Ukraine I think that I hope that uh, you know the sanity prevails and I hope that our governments and our presidents and partners you know get their shit together and stop arguing and yeah and I hope it translates to both Ukrainian and Polish societies to kind of uh, continue uh, to do what we do best which is uh, destroy the enemy I think uh, isn't that right which is Russians it, it is, yeah, it which is, is not, not each other the sooner the sooner not the better <laughs> Okay, great. Michal, thank you for joining us for thank this conversation. Much. Thank you for your invitation. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.